Greetings friends. I'm so glad you came back to join us. So I'm here to talk about with parishioners about different people in the Bible and today Janice Driscoll is with us and what is one of the things you're involved in? Well one of the ministries that I'm involved in over here at St. Mary's is the Extraordinary Minister uh, and I take communion to nursing homes and that has been something that's been on my heart for a very long time and uh, something that not only is it beneficial to people who are homebound and, uh, you know, in isolation or, you know, uh, kind of uh, alienated from the parish community, uh, it also is good therapy for me because we develop wonderful relationships and so it's, a, it's an honor uh, to be part of that ministry. And thank you for doing a lot. That's a wonderful ministry. So before we start, I'm going to show you a Bible as usual. So this is the Bible, the New American Bible. And one of the nice things about this Bible is this is the translation that you will hear at Mass. So if you want to hear the exact words you hear at Mass, this is a good one. And so many Bibles look like this. They have pictures on the front. So if you want a picture on the front of your Bible, you can find a Bible with a picture on it. And this would be for you. <laughs> you know, I use that Bible too. Really? I do. And one of Jim's, my son's school teacher, gave me that Bible Oh goodness, probably 10, 10 years ago. And I really like this edition because it has little footnotes at the bottom where if you might be reading and you're not quite sure or understand, it actually is footnoted so it gives you a higher understanding of what's, of what's being discussed. So yes. it's beautiful, beautiful it edition. Is so who have you chosen for us to talk about in the Bible? So um, there's uh, someone in the Bible that I can completely relate to and that's Mary Magdalene. Uh, and the reason why I would like to talk about Mary Magdalene is because, um, like her, I am a sinner. I am, I've got evil spirits in me too that need to be kind of like driven out through uh, the love of Jesus Christ and the, you know, saving power of God. And so she has always been a great inspiration uh, to me um, because of that. And, you know, Mary too, um, I think everybody knows the name, yeah. but not many really people really know how important she was and some of the really important things that she did. Yeah, I think probably one of the, the greatest things was that, you know, of course she had such a, a very close, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, which, you know, we're all encouraged to, to do that, uh, to know each other so intimately. But then also uh, what I find really just beautifully uh, fascinating about her is that you know, she was one of the first people who, you know, Jesus, uh, the risen Christ, uh, you know, she saw the risen Christ. So she was the first one. And so to me, that just is such a beautiful thing. And then she gets this ministry herself from Jesus, who he tells her, you know, go tell our disciples, you know, go, you know, I'll meet you in Galilee or, you know, whatever. So she runs, you know, she runs in haste, you know, to go tell the disciples that she has seen the risen Lord. And a lot of times when, you know, I am graced with the Holy Spirit to see the workings of Christ in my life, I kind of feel like her that I want to go run and tell everybody right, right. about the beautiful joy of having Jesus in your life. Yes, and we should, we should all be that way. We yeah. should all be running, running. Yeah, running. So <laughs> the other thing I think is funny about that story is that in one of the Gospels, it has her seeing the empty tomb, yeah. And then going back and telling Peter and John, and Peter and John going with her yeah. and seeing the empty tomb, but then they went back home. They didn't believe. But she sat yeah. there and she just was so sad. She just Sweet. even wanted to be Sweet. where he had been. Oh, yeah. Like she loved her. She loved him that She much. loved him so much. She loved him that much. And I think, you know, uh, you know, in reading the gospel stories, each gospel it has a little different take on you know, when, when Jesus approached Mary, you know, the funny one is, is when, you know, she, she, was, she was weeping, you know, there in front of the, um, in front of the open tomb, the, the, you know, the empty tomb, and, you know, here comes Jesus, and she thinks he's the gardener, you know, which I think is really great. And, and something else that I think is really cool is that, you know, Jesus doesn't always present himself as Jesus, like the Jesus we right. think about, you know. He, we have to see Christ in others. I think right. that that's a really beautiful kind of way to put that, where she sees this man and she immediately just thinks he's the gardener, you know, and please, sir, you know, just tell me where you've laid him and, you know, I'll, I'll take him and take care of him. And he's like, 
Mary, you know? Yeah. She's like, Rubani? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and she yeah, realizes, yeah. you know, that that's the teacher. That's that's right. Jesus. Yeah. And so then he's like, you know, quit holding on to me. You know, go and tell the disciples. Gotcha. So I think that that's another right, cool right. sort of thing to think about, you know, is that Jesus won't present himself as Jesus in our lives. He'll present us with others who represent the love of Jesus Christ as we work uh, the, the workings of the Holy Spirit through others. Something else I love about that story also is that in the garden, man's job was a gardener. Yes. You know, and oh, so, yeah. so Jesus was sort of, that showed how he was sort of a new Adam. That's right. Oh, he oh was yeah, isn't that brilliant? brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you really meditate yeah. on these stories, you know, reading the Word of God, of, of course, is just amazing to begin with. But then when you meditate... Right. on his words. You know, it's kind of like peeling the onion, you know, or unpacking the, you know, the package, is that there's layer upon layer upon layer of things that could be so meaningful in our life. And so that's, that's a right. beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so one of the other things, of course, that Mary did is actually help support Jesus and her, his followers when they were traveling. Oh, sure. You know, so the women of Galilee, you know, right. there was a group of them, right. you know, four or five, you know, and I thought that, that this is really kind of a cool thing to think about, too, is that, you know, Mary is is mentioned by name. By name. Right. By right. name. Right. right. And one of the few that's mentioned over and over and over again. Over and over and over right. again. She's, she's mentioned by name. Right. And how they continually... You know, ministered or, or provided resources, I guess. It was provided the resources, Pre yeah. Provided the resources right. for them as they were in right. their ministry. And so I, I think that, you know, again, she was a very well-known individual in his life. Mm -hmm. And really, um, I think, just demonstrates again how the community surrounding Jesus, his followers, and who wanted to be just a, to be with him, you know, right. just be a part of him. And uh, I thought that was really very beautiful. So. Right, right, right. And he, one of the definitions of a disciple is somebody who actually walks in the footsteps. And exactly. they literally, yeah. literally walked in the footsteps. I just always thought that was yeah. great. You know, something else that strikes me when, you know, we, we talk about Mary Magdalene or, you know, learn from scripture, you know, kind of some of the stories where she's a part of is that, you know, she was one of the ones who stayed you know, the disciples kind of disbanded after, you know, Jesus was crucified or that, you know, while he was being crucified. And here were these women, you know, some of them were kind of, you know, far off and crying, you know, in the background. And then in another gospel, she's there with Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, and they're there at the crucifixion. And it, um, you know, it occurred to me that, you know, in those days, it would have been, you know, unheard of. You know, here's this man being crucified, and, you know, if you were part of that, you could have been crucified along with him, alongside of him. There, it, was, it wasn't unknown for, you know, members of the family to be crucified with. And right. so she was really kind of sticking her neck out there, you know, right. like being there at the foot, you know, of where he was being crucified. And so she, I, I think how bold her faith was right. in him and how much she loved him is that she didn't care to jeopardize her life to be there with him in his greatest sorrow. And I think that's also true in our lives. Sometimes the brave, bold thing to do is just to be there. To be present. Just to stick stick it out in the hard times. And that's sometimes that's sometimes it. That yeah. I, and that's yeah. you're exactly right. And so so that's why, you know, she's just she's got layer upon yeah, layer, yeah, you know, of yeah. things that are just so, so beautiful about her and her relationship with Jesus. Right. You know, I kind of, like I said, you know, the seven demons that were, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> and it's curious, know. we don't even really know what that means. We don't, you know. You know. And, and, you know, I, I think it's kind of neat to sort of think about, you know, that, you know, there's seven deadly sins and then there's seven right. virtues that you can right. combat these sins with these virtues. And, you know, Jesus, you know, you know, eradicated, you know, seven demons out of her. And so we know that, you know, she, she was kind of just like us, you know, the, you know we're, we're constantly falling. Right. And so though, even though she, you know, had this sinful behavior or had these demons within her, you know, she still was so close to Christ. And, and so, you know, to, to think about her as just, you know, a common Joe, just like me, right. and to know that Jesus could love me that deeply to be a part of my life is just, you know, sometimes I think about it and I want to cry yeah. in my heart myself to realize 
just how much I'm loved. Even in my sinful behavior, I'm still just loved. It's really mind-boggling to me. There's hope for all of us. You know, she said, yeah, she says there's hope for all of us. One, uh, Another image that I love of Mary, and um, I have never seen art, this art, is the three women, Mary Magdalene, who brought the spices, which is yes. why they went to the tomb yeah. in the first place, and how even though their savior, their loved one had died, and they saw him die, and they put him in the tomb, they still were going to carry on. I mean, even yeah. though it was only taking care of his dead body, mm-hmm. that was important to them. Oh, yeah. And I just think that that's, that's a great thing, too. It's beautiful. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for, you know, I... Uh, I think it's really uh, also very beautiful to think about how she wasn't just a a passing disciple or somebody who was just casually associated with him. She had a very deep relationship even with his mother. Right. You know, and so that she was part of that inner circle, Mm -hmm. you know. And being from Galilee, you know, she probably, she may have known Jesus from the time he was, you know, a child. You know, I mean, they could have been childhood friends. You know what I mean? I mean, they could have been neighbors, for goodness sakes. You know, and so it's just, you know, like I said, it's, there's so many layers when you you think about her and meditate about her relationship with, with Jesus, how beautiful and how close, intimate friends they should they were, right, right, you know? Right. Yeah. So do you have any story of maybe Mary Magdalene in your own life? Oh, I know wow. that you, I know that you have. <laughs> <laughs> I always have crazy stories. I know, you know, um, I will tell you that, you know, for me, truly, why she's so important to me mm-hmm. is, again, because t- to be humbled by... Um, the love of Jesus Christ in my life right. and how, how, you know, I have realized in my life, you know, how sinful my behavior yes. has been and, you know, how many demons I have, right. you know, running around inside my head sometimes. Yeah, as they all do, yes. And really, truly, the only way in which I find peace when I am so troubled and so disturbed you know, we run around trying to, you know, find cures for things and, you know, therapy and, right, right, <laughs> you right, know, right, doing right. all these other things. Really, truly, my only cure is Jesus Christ. Right, that's right. I mean, that really, truly is. And I think through Mary and understanding her relationship with him, I realize that the only way that I can be cured and to be saved is is through my love of Jesus Christ. That's right. And so, and so that's what, you know, her story tells me. Mm-hmm. is that there's hope for me, uh, there's the love of Jesus, and when I am troubled and when I am disturbed, um, really I just go to my knees and, and talk to the Lord. And within seconds, within minutes, within just a short period of time, I feel the flood of grace and I feel the, the love right. of Him, you know, kind of, you know, um, wash down upon me uh, and really cleanse me of my sins. And so it's a beautiful thing. It really, truly is. And so, you know, through Mary Magdalene, there's hope for me. Even. Yeah, yeah. yeah, praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Praise God. <laughs> and, and then also, of course, as we talked before, that when the Lord has touched you, it yeah. is important to share that information. Maybe oh, yeah. not the particulars, but how, you know, Jesus has so change your life and save you. That's oh, cool. exactly. Which yeah. I know that you do all I the time. I do, I do. So, you know, like, I'm like, I run in haste. I really do. And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, i got to tell yeah. you this story. This is the craziest thing, you know. I felt the Spirit, you know, move within me today. Or this is how I saw, you know, Jesus and someone else. Or, you know, this is how he's touched my life today. Right. And, you know, that he, we're empowered to do that. I mean, this is our ministry as Christians. Right. We're supposed to run in haste always, you know, to, to run and go tell each other, to support each other, and to uh, be a witness right. uh, to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. That's right. That's right. Okay, praise God. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we hope you come next time when we talk with some other person about some other saint, and it's going to be great. Yep. And God bless you. Thank you.